Good. Yeah. Now, no, 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 what? no. Just wait, okay? You need to let me get set up, okay? <laughs> no. Every week. I want to make you run. Every damn week. I want to make you run oh, to man. the chair. Yeah. That whole 50 metres I'm, I'm, that you have to run from yeah, our camera I, I to here. I was going to say that whole four feet, foot that you make me run. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I need some sugar after that. You got a whole pile of sugar in mm. there, but I can't complain. I also have sugar and whiskey. Mm. Well, it is fucking hot. So, you know. Yes, it is. And you know why it's hot? Why is that? Happy New Year, Dylan! Happy New Year! Oh my goodness, we've made it to 2020. Absolutely. Now, yes. on the way home from work today, because yes, us suckers do have to work. Oh, you poor bastard. Yep. Yeah, I was going to get those party popper things that go oh, yeah. with the confetti. Yeah. And I went to the shops yeah. and I was like, oh, what do I need? I need a new toothbrush head for my electric toothbrush thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, got some salad stuff for yeah. the lamb chops I was cooking for dinner. You healthy and, bastard. And on the way out, I was like, fuck, there's something I'm forgetting. Getting. Of There's course. something I'm, I know I came here because I've been meaning to pick up these toothbrush things for like weeks. Yeah. And as soon as I hop in this room you know, to record our wonderful podcast, <laughs> um, you sat down and went, fuck, fuck. I know exactly Party what poppers. it is. Yeah. 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 Well, either way, happy new year. Here's happy to 2020. 50 episodes last year and a hell of a lot more to come this year. Oh, yeah. And well, it's time to visit the fire station in emergency because here comes 2C3 Pod, the legendary Doc Hudson. All right. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Anchorman. Thank you. I thought Number I'd throw you a little slow boy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it is. because yeah. he gets kicked out of the thing. Jack and he's- Black's just kicked Baxter <laughs> yeah. off the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, no. a, what a great movie. I don't know uh, anybody who doesn't like Anchorman. I know people who don't really like- Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. I know a but- few people like that, but Anchorman- yeah, like, come on. It is obviously Will Ferrell, but it's played to the point where, like, you, oh, you see it as Ron Burgundy as his yes, own character, you know? So, exactly. technically, he's done a good job at acting in that. Did you know about the Ron Burgundy podcast? Yes, I have it's listened to it. It's terrible. It is rubbish. It is so bad. See, the, I tell this to people a lot who ask me about the podcast. Like, yeah. why do you do it? Like, yeah. how's it all going? And I say, well, like, I was speaking to a friend that I saw today, mm. like, at the gym. He came up to me and said, oh, love the podcast, man. Yeah. Like, he's got a really, like, actually quite a popular, like, comedy Twitter account. Oh, yeah, right. Like, yeah. You would you'd know it's him by looking at the little image, but otherwise yeah. you wouldn't know it's him. Anyway, yeah. like he asked me, so like, how's it all going? I said, yeah, it's going good. And he said, well, why'd you start it? And I said, mm. well, I've listened to so many podcasts over the mm. years and there are just so many that I'm just like, oh, I could do this better. Yes. <laughs> like, you know? And so See, I, I, it, it took a- us a while to get here. No, of course. You but, know, I mean, quality now. I mean, poof. Yeah, poof. Yeah. I mean- but I, will, I will still all through 2020 Poor. be <laughs> Poor. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I will still all be through 2020 preaching our quantity over quality. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, speaking of quantity over yes. quality, we are Two's Company Threes a podcast. Oh, that's right. Of course. My name is Dylan, as always, with my co-host Mitchell. And thank you for tuning into our first episode of 2020. This week we'll be hitting you up with fresh news and a review of Welcome to the Jungle. No, 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 no not at all. <laughs> Jumanji, the next level. The song is in the movie, though. <laughs> that's right. Surprise. Of course. Yeah. It, well, so. and also, I mean, the first one was Welcome to the Jungle, so give a guy a break. You know? Yeah. So yeah. we'll be talking about that, and I'm looking yes. forward to talking about that. No, so am I. There's there's a few things that I want to touch on that I I wasn't expecting yeah, to really yeah. cover, but either way, yeah, yeah. It should be fun. But mm. before we kick it off, yes. as we said earlier, it is stinking hot in here, so. Ooh. It's all relaxed today. It's a singlet. It's a sh- it's a singlet and shorts type of day. So I'm still wearing my dress shirt. No, it's all right. Got to be a pro. Got to totally be a pro. Un- totally uncomfortable wearing shorts in front of the camera, but we'll, we'll put up with it. Hopefully, nobody <laughs> yes. watches YouTube. Hopefully, watch YouTube. That's, no, no, no. We'll trim it off. Oh, hello, oh, puppy dogs. Oh, hello, puppies. Bye-bye puppies. Bye-bye puppies. Yes. Anyway, you listen, before we kick off, just a little advertisement for- uh, ooh. Ooh, Are you okay? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's only a chair I found off the curb. Oh, it's I okay. It was, I thought it was your back or something. No, it was the chair. Because <laughs> it is 2020. We are getting old now. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, my God. I'm oh, I'm yeah. 28 this month. Wait, what? Tw- yeah. Yeah, right. I'm 20. Like, I forgot the other yeah. day. I was like, how old am I? <laughs> Do you ever get that? You kind of think, hold on a minute. No, I don't. I? Because yeah. it seems like almost everybody I talk to is like, hey, you're almost 30. And oh, I'm like, yeah. Mm, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, you had anyway. some awesome news to kick things off, man. Yes, yeah. Before we jump mm. into the actual podcast topic news uh, right. for this week, just a little advertisement that my local Lake Macquarie Strongman Deadlifts for Dollars competition is coming this mm. Sunday, January 5th, 2020, of course. Ooh. Now, if you don't know what that is, yeah. uh, for your Nova Castrian listeners, which means everybody living in Newcastle, Australia, mm-hmm. um, Lake Mac Strongman, a strongman team that I'm a part of, is raising money and funds for the 
RFS and yes. the, what are they called? The New South Wales Wildlife Information Rescue and Education Services WISE. Now, yes. everybody all over the world is aware that Australia is burning down. Yeah, and especially we're not, New South Wales where we live. Wales, mm. yes. so Especially New South Wales, yes. So the RFS, the local fire services, are doing a tremendous job trying Ooh, to keep yeah. those flames under wraps. I mean, it's, it's fucking horrific, but mm. without getting too political- uh, Feel free to come and watch. It's $40 entry if you want to compete. There are great prizes up for grabs as well. But most importantly, all that mm. money, as I said, uh, including like on the day, including the competitor's entry yeah. fee of that $40 is being split 50-50 yeah. uh, to the RFS and to Wires. Wires. Yeah. So, yeah, it's mm. being held at the CrossFit Gym Body 360 uh, in Swansea. So if mm -hmm. you want to go have a go or come and watch me compete, yeah, because I'm part of that strongman Our crew. Our Dylan from 2C3 Pod will be entering and yeah. raising me as much money as possible. And raising mm. as many weights as possible well, off yeah. the ground above my knee of course i feel like that's the point you know oh, yeah, yeah the point yeah mm. so the event's called deadlifts for dollars the link is down below if you want yes. to check it out if you want to enter or if you just want to go and watch and you know support your local fireies and yeah. you know that the wildlife centers that are doing a tremendous job around new mm. south wales and australia looking after all the creatures that have survived yeah uh you know this horrific event Absolutely. so um go to the facebook event below to find out more but otherwise on with the show! Well, I was going to say, even if you're not a fan of um, strongman competitions or anything, it's always fun to see a guy's eyes bulge almost out of his head and his veins almost bursting out of his body and it looks like he's trying to do a big poop. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Jesus. So if you want to see my nosebleed, come and watch yeah. me lift up. <laughs> absolutely. And potentially faint. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, moving on. Yes. First topic for news. Yes. We now. have um, Star Wars, the rise of Stairwalker. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's a callback. Check out in the archives. Pop in Spotify, Apple Podcasts and YouTube. YouTube. Big Summer, Summer blowout. blowout and all that jazz. Yes, of course. <laughs> now, um, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, uh, ap apparently isn't a big deal in China anymore. Nope. Mm. The thing is, I, I, listened to <laughs> a, nope. I listened to a news article about this the other day, and they explained yeah. it quite well, is that China didn't get Star Wars back in the 70s, and I mm. don't think the prequels either. So they don't have the ability to bank on nostalgia. Yes. Like America and Australia and the Western world mm -hmm. does. So, like, fair enough, a lot of movie studios, like like Terminator, for example, I know I bring it up every time, but this was yeah. an important talking topic of the Terminator Dark Fate movie, is that mm -hmm. they re almost relied on Chinese audiences to bring in the big bucks where it flopped in the Western world. That's right. Star Wars doesn't have that, unfortunately, because they don't care. No, that's <laughs> right, exactly. You and know? Yeah. They, like you said, they don't have that nostalgia to fall back onto. And just a perfect example of that is this the ninth and final film in this Skywalker saga an anthology. Yes. Yep. It's opening weekend. Now, I'll just run over a couple of other numbers first. So, mm -hmm. Ip Man 4, which we discussed last week in Yasel Pass. Those who think they know what that means, Ip Man 4, yep. Yeah, Ip Man 4. Ip Man, yep. <laughs> Donnie Yen's franchise. That one over the weekend. Same weekend as Star Wars, 46.7 million over that weekend. Very respectable. Great numbers, abo yep. Above average for China. And Star Wars has come out and made 12 million dollars over that weekend including preview screenings yeah that is absolutely abysmal for that market that is a yeah. huge market that they are missing out on yeah well not only that but it's it's not just china it's like the world over yeah it's like people aren't going to see this movie they've no. been burned and we've talked about this they've been burned by the last film mm -hmm. um it's surprisingly enough the article that you included in our notes for this week that indicate these numbers is showing yes. that knives out Ryan yeah. Johnson's latest film is over has overtaken yeah. um you know Star Wars in terms of its box office results mm. you know? so as i said we've re i've reviewed Star Wars and i think it's a really good film and i think it does its best to bring yes. the franchise home after the abysmal performance and storytelling of the last jedi that's right and as you as we all know you haven't seen it so you can't really comment on what you feel about those films and how they conveyed it wouldn't matter anyway but if you did watch from the yes. force awakens to now you'd understand what everybody means oh yeah you know like yeah. it just wasn't star wars enough to bring it home so people have been burned by that um mm. as i said in the review is that if this film if, if if last jedi didn't exist and this film had two movies to breathe over mm -hmm. it would have been able to fill out those story elements and bring it home really well and it probably would have made bank because yeah. the force awakens isn't like one of the top 10 most profitable movies of all time because it was the oh, new Star Wars exactly. trilogy. Exactly. It was the first one since, um, oh, I can't even remember the third one. Uh, Revenge of the Sith? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the, Revenge the, of the Yeah, The good yeah. prequel. Yeah. No, that's right. 
Yeah. But um, you know, it's it's no surprise that it's failing. It it kind of sucks that it is, but at the same time, like, does Disney really care? Like, they've got enough money. Like, that's they, right. They'd be like, yeah, well, merch is going to make up for this because people like stormtroopers. That's the, Mandal- exactly right. the Mandalorian, which we'll talk about in a moment, is absolutely killing it. Yes, and I'll get more into as to why later because I can't wait to talk about that to you who haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm very excited to nod along to that one. Absolutely, yeah, but absolutely. either way, it is quite. Um, it, it would be disappointing for Disney that. They don't have that grip hold on that Chinese market for this yeah. particular franchise, one that they've banked so much on. Yep. But at the same time, I mean, let's be honest, Star Wars, it's going to make bank. Mm-hmm. It's still going to make bank. It's still going to, it's probably going to scrape over the billion. Yeah, possibly. Like, I'd think so. Yeah. I, I imagine so, just off name brand alone. They'd keep it in the cinemas long enough to do that. Yeah. Because they can't have the ability um, to do that. Anyway. Yeah. But, um, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, but speaking of like almost making a billion and so, yep. uh, but if I'm not mistaken, Jumanji, um, the next level has already made like 450 mil. It was a massive opening weekend, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah, monstrous weekend. That holiday weekend is a, like an underdog you know, for like big numbers. J- we'll talk about Jumanji later in our review, but yes. like going off the topic of like performance in mm-hmm. terms of like box office and when it was released, I think it did itself a huge favor, although it was a risky favor. Yes. Uh, it was a risky release which worked out in its favor, sorry, because Star Wars is a massive franchise, bombed. Cats is oh. an abysmal flop. Oh, man. And that came out the same weekend. And then Jumanji comes in and, I mean, Frozen is still out. So people are still seeing Frozen, which is expected. Absolutely. And I believe that was the eighth film to cross the one billion mark this year. Yeah. Uh, sorry, my apologies, 2019. What a fucking yeah. year. Dude, man, I, we need to scri- like clip that little speech that I gave last week. Because yes, I've been I, meaning to I do was that. Quite, yeah. I was quite proud of that. No, yeah. I, I was... I, Clapped. Thank yeah. you. I know. Um, Thank you. But what was I saying? Yeah. yeah so Jumanji yeah. opened yes. the perfect weekend against big names, which fucking flopped <laughs> big, big time. time. So if you're looking for an exciting movie to go see, and if you're not a fan of Star Wars, don't go see Cats. No. Uh, if you're I just a- pulled up the first article. I just Googled Cats. Yeah. The first article is from Variety. Yep. Cats headed for $100 million box office loss. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and I it's even I, getting some DLC. You know, they're re-releasing you know oh, I, special I, effects. I, that, it's too that, late. It's just not gonna happen. That just blows my mind that they literally, after their release date, started sending slightly edited versions to other other like, to the cinemas, saying, "Could you put this one out? It's slightly better." Like, like yeah, what the it, fuck? Yeah, I'm fini- sorry, you're a professional fucking studio. Yeah, I think we talked about this last week. Like, finish your project, and if yeah. that's is that, if that's as good as you can do, like, you, you either shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Or you should have given yourself longer. You know, there are other, like Sonic, for example. I know this always comes up. Oh, but man. They gave themselves the time to do it. Yeah. You know, no, that's and exactly they, right. they were like, we're not releasing this until we're happy with it. If they weren't happy with cats, exactly. you know, I mean, they may have been because they're pretty confident in their marketing. Well, their marketing is going to be the thing that cost them all that money because <laughs> it had a $100 million budget. Yeah. It's going to make roughly that, but it's still going to lose $100 million. So yeah. they've like doubled down on advertising and marketing for yeah. this. And I mean, I'm excited to go to a Voca Beach picture theater, but my God, their Instagram feed needs to shut the fuck up about this movie. <laughs> they they are cats. posting so much about it. And I think that's because Universal has gone, please post all this shit. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, they're shoving it down everyone's throats. And my all, God, it's just frustrating. All I've heard though about cats. I know this wasn't on our list to talk about, oh, but I love, I love talking about it. I love ragging on things that deserve it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've heard that it's just very weirdly horny. Like uh, what people are saying, like the, the cats and the way they move, they okay. just heat, the way they speak to each other, the way they move, it's just a super horny film. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I, that's not what, what I expected. Yeah, so yeah. people are saying, you know, the movie's crap, but Pornhub's, you know, what do they call them, weebs? There's a there's a particular term, like they'll people will be looking up like cats porn and things like that because of like Taylor Swift and how they move and they're all sexy like uh, but that's just weird man yeah. like I don't want to go see like it's bad enough having my cat show his asshole the, to me every time the, I scratch his oh back oh my god I, I don't want to go see my, two hours yeah. of singing cats being like, like yeah Ugh. no I, I man I don't, I don't I don't I don't know where we're going but this first episode of 2020 is like a, whoo yeah, so far she's, she's the wild one. my nipples. Well, I mean, so. the, the opening picture to that article is literally Taylor Swift sprinkling catnip. So I mean, hey, they're all like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're all getting high and fucking yeah. each other. Yeah, apparently, exactly. It's a competition. I believe the whole movie is about uh, like a cat talent show to see which one gets to, I don't know, fuck another one. I don't know. Like, I don't know, but hopefully, it's a talent show. Apparently, is it? Yeah, like that's what the whole show movie's about. Okay, speaking of talent and something else, yes. <laughs> John, John Do you fa- have any for me? Do I have a what? Do you have any for me? No. Sorry. Maybe next year. Next year. Anyway. Sorry. 
John Favreau has confirmed the season two of the is next on the list. Yeah, John no, Favreau no, has fine. confirmed yeah. season two of the Mandalorian coming mm. next year. Uh, well, wow. actually, no, sorry, fall this year. Sorry, I can't believe we're this one episode deep into 2020 and we've already got this much of a blockbuster surprise news. Yeah, this right? is not a surprise. This is not a surprise <laughs> at all. Not. You haven't watched it. No, no, no. But I know that Disney Plus, while they're in their infancy right now. Yep. Mandalorian has been their steady strong point of like, oh, critical acclaim for their first original big series. Yeah. Of course it's going to get a second season. And well, of course it is. It's not only the fact that it exists, yeah. it's the fa- it's also the fact that it's actually really unbelievably good. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah, coming that's, from that's, somebody who hmm. doesn't watch TV shows. I've watched yeah. a few episodes of The Witcher, which I'll get to more in a moment. Yeah. But The Mandalorian, there's just something about it. There's there's a, there's a very specific aesthetic to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And when you don't mm-hmm. get that quite right, it tends to flop. Like yes. that was one of my problems with the Last Jedi. There was a casino planet where they all wore suits. It's like that's too earthy for me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and there was also this this subtle theme. Well, not really subtle theme, but a theme about animal cruelty. It's like I'm here to watch Star Wars. Mm. I'm not here mm. to watch gambling problems and and yeah. horse racing. You know. Yeah. But the Mandalorian does a very very good job at being very aesthetically Star Wars. Okay. And the acting yeah. is great. The special effects are like fucking on point yeah and you know the, the cast is amazing so there's no surprise at all that the mandalorian is getting season two and Absolutely i am not. all for it because i watched the final episode today there's only eight episodes in the first season each episode goes for about half an hour that's nice yeah i like that not like not, that. not not overproducing it to the point where there's too much where people get bored that's eight what, episodes is a really nice number yeah, yeah. and that's Keep where, people wanting that's right that's where mm. i struggle to watch tv shows because yeah, they release right. like 10 episodes and they're all an hour yeah. long i get yeah. bored like yep. Fair enough. It, like the story may be escalating, mm. but I'm just like I've, I've had enough. Yep. I want to go do something else. Yeah, absolutely. But the Mandalorian. Um, one of the other things as well is why I'm very particular with how I watch TV shows is that this release is week to week. Yeah. But when I've watched the most recent one, I go, oh, I can't wait for the next one. Yes. I haven't felt that since I stopped watching free to air TV like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Because yeah. everything's streamed now. I well, haven't finished The Witcher, even though it's all available. Straight yeah. there. No, exactly. That's right. There's but not I got that the, want for it. I got the thrill mm. of looking forward to the yeah. next one because the, the you know episodes always leave you on a cliffhanger. Yeah. And in, in, yeah. in, in defense of streaming services, there have been quite a few over the last couple of years or since you've stopped watching free to air TV that yeah. do go week to week. Oh, no, I get that. But yeah. at the same time, you found one that you wanted to and it is week to week. Yeah. So you get to build that and- th- that's something that I miss as well. Yeah, like yeah. Dexter, Breaking Bad, all those shows I was watching week to week. Sons of Anarchy, man. Yeah. I spent fucking seven seasons watching that shit week to week, man. That's cool. So I watched I, The Walking I, I Dead season one to three. Without, yeah. I still hold a gripe with our little group of friends. Sons of Anarchy. I was the only one to watch it. Then all of a sudden, four years after it ended, <laughs> there's like five of like you guys who were like, ooh, Sons of Anarchy, if you watch it, so good. And I'm like, where were you fucking five years ago? <laughs> Dude, like, that's me. Because yeah. I, I watched it on Netflix. It, it, that's you what know, I mean. So like, you did that. Steph did that. Catherine did that. <laughs> Jono did that. Jen did that. Like yeah. the, oh, half of the group was like, "I've oh, been telling you I guys know. for years." <laughs> I watched it week to week. I still hold that against all y'all. <laughs> My lord, fifty seventy eighty motherfuckers. Yes, yeah, fifty seventy eighty. But just to quickly, I've just got speaking some, of Jono, shout yes, out JP, JP Constructions. Constructions. Hit them up on Facebook. Um, but just to go back to the box office results for yeah, one more fifty second. bucks. <laughs> Please, um, yeah. Sorry, Cats and Walk- yep. and Jumanji came out same weekend. Yeah. Jumanji, $125 million budget, Ooh. currently stands at $471 million. Crushed it. Already made bank. Yeah. Cats, $100 million budget, currently stands at $38.4 million worldwide. I'm surprised it had $100 million budget because today's standard, that's relatively low, especially for a 199% special effects film. Basically, it's face. But yeah. they still had to pay the people to do the movement. Well, that's, that's right. The yeah. That's the problem. That's motion capture. All that it's, money. it's lazy animation, but it's, it's great. It's fucking gross. But yeah. either way- <laughs> That's yeah. a very clear example of the big difference between spending 100 million right and yes. very, very wrong. Yes, absolutely. Mm. But moving yes. on to the next topic, which has me very excited. Oh, yes, you added this. Yeah. Now, I, I stumbled across this on Twitter, but people are having similar reactions to this Ooh. than they did to cats. Yeah. Pe- people are like, oh, I'm terrified, blah, blah, blah. I'm super. Super excited for this. Now, if you haven't heard, oh. us 90s kids out there, you'll all re- you'll all remember Clifford. The, the big red motherfucking dog. The gigantic motherfucking yes. dog. And he was completely red. There's a live action film on its way. And now, I'm looking at, for the first time at this little screen grab. I from, wish I could, from, but my internet from, isn't letting me. Oh, okay. Well, I have seen it. I've got all the internet right now. Yep. Um, okay. I'm not sure how to feel. I'm not terrified. I'm more cautious. 
Okay. And concerned, maybe, that it's going to look bad when you get to see all of him. Okay. And in motion with live action. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't I'm know. not sure. I, I've how always to feel had a bit of a this. soft spot for those sort of things because I'm one of the very few people who somewhat find enjoyment in the first Garfield movie. Dude, it's still a guilty pleasure. Oh, yeah. dead set, dead set, man. De- oh, sorry. There yeah. we go. We have a gif of There's us doing gif. that. Yeah. I know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, find the gif on the Facebook page. Two C three pod. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. No. No. I get that. Yeah. But Garfield, to me, that one still it still had that cartoonish element where you could. It's obviously a fake cat. Yeah. You know yeah. this. It, oh, I don't know. I do need to see that, the full body. Do you think they're trying too hard to make him look too realistic? Well, they need to. I, they can't do that. You could, that's not Clifford. Yeah. yeah, Clifford, yeah no. Clifford's not a real dog that was reacting in real ways. No. I mean, I saw that motherfucker juggle shit and like pick up an entire <laughs> yeah. truck and like drink the truck. Like, you know, like, so I don't know. I'd rather it be a little less real. Okay, you're, yeah. yeah. So you ha- you'd rather to be more Garfieldy, where it's got that yeah, cartoony yeah, yeah. look to it. Exactly, yeah. yeah just where so he like, does yeah. juggle and walk on his back legs and do that's goofy what, stuff. Exactly, yeah. that's right. Be this giant motherfucking freak of Did a dog. Did Clifford ever talk? Did he have no. speech bubbles? No, he didn't. No, do I didn't yeah. see any speech bubbles. So unless there was some, I'm sure there would be some kind of like weird like Clifford number three hundred forty two. Clifford learns to read, or yeah, <laughs> Clifford yeah. three hundred forty two. Clifford becomes a citizen. You know, some shit like that. Yeah, but either but way, pe- yeah. People on Twitter are saying like, mm. no, nah, the trailer shows if it's worth it, or, worth it or not. There isn't a trailer yet. All right, Sonic movie fans, you know what to do. So people are trying to 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 talk shit. Of on course this. they are. Of course. They are. See, okay, never end a sto- ending story. That picture there. Yeah, I I would rather it look like that. Okay. As opposed to making it too oh. real. I don't want the eyes you know to be what, real. You know what I would love this movie to be, but it will not be? Oh. A gigantic red dog puppet. I knew it. I knew you were going with so that. So, 90s yeah. kids and, a, and beyond, yeah. never ending story. That gigantic dragon dog thing, whatever his name was. Yeah. Imagine that, but Clifford. That would be great. Oh, um, but these days, obviously, CGI is cheaper. Um, yeah. But list- also, it would make the limitations so much more because never ending story. It's not like- that puppet had to physically move all that much and drastically. No, this yeah. is the dog. This is you a expect dog. Clifford and then see it running. They couldn't yeah. do that with a puppet. It's funny. That'd like we much. talk about this as well. And in mm. one of the comments on that Twitter page, we're saying, yes. you know, Sonic movie, you know what to do. Oh. This is ex- exactly the same thing. People are look. People looked at Sonic and went, yeah. he looks too realistic. Doesn't look too. Doesn't look enough like the the Sonic that they knew. Of course. So they redesigned it because yeah. Clifford had big goofy ears and big eyes. Yeah. I I like from the one picture that's on the internet about Clifford, and it's just yeah. his head poking out the front door. A door. Yeah. I'm okay with that so far, but I do want to see a full length trailer to see if I am okay with well, it. Well, m- maybe not even a trailer, just a few set photos or something like that, or yeah. like you know, like actual screen grabs. I-, I-, I need to see the full body first, but my worry is that the face looks too realistic. Okay, so as, rather, in, as uh, we said, you'd rather it be cartoony. And I-, I know the cartoon. I know the books. Mm-hmm. I want to see that cartoony face. I don't want this to be a Lion King mistake, <laughs> or like yeah. you like you said, even a s- original Sonic mistake, where they take too far away from the original character to make yeah. it too real. The thing about- Remember, like, it's a fucking cartoon. Yeah. Like, that's the key. I think the one mm. thing that people sort of get uh, f- uh, upset about the most is that when mm. you try to make things too realistic, like Lion King and yes. the original Sonic trailer, is yeah. that there's just not enough emotion. Exactly. Like, when Sonic s- screams and yells, ah, when James Marsden's character finds him, yeah. when he's got the big, bulgy Sonic eyes, yeah. there's more emotion in that than there was it, in the original version. It, that's exactly right. Lion King. People, Same that was issue biggest with problems. That. Uh, yeah. Dude, I mean, you can- literally go back to um there's an episode titled <laughs> the lion shit the bed yes that episode has my review of the lion king and my god i ripped it to shreds based on just purely emotion yeah somehow seventh highest film of all time highest grossing animation ever oh highest grossing animation you know it's, why they tried to make a fucking live act- uh, ugh, you took your kids to see it so did everybody else everybody yeah. paid for three tickets that's all Exa- oh no 100 percent. yeah dude yeah no that, that's exactly right everybody there there was not a single person by themselves yeah like somebody's paid for somebody else i'm just glad that mm. movie like Joker, Deadpool, It Chapter 2, they're all- The only people that are buying these tickets are adults and yes. they're making bank. Yes, you know, they're exactly. not bringing their kids yep. to, to, to increase the box office. Anyway, I-, no, I, no, the, I the, the, the period, the renaissance of the R-rated film is on its way, my yes, friend. Yes, bring back the 80s. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> so yeah. much yes. Yeah. But mm. speaking of R-rated movies, the yes. next one's going to be quite interesting to see whether it does turn out to be R-rated mm. or not. And everybody will be worried about this. But at the same time, the movie itself- will be fine. It just depends on whether it will follow the 
prequels? No, the the previous no, well, movies, yeah, the previous films in, in the franchise. In the franchise, yes. excellent way to explain it. Yeah, uh, Deadpool three yes. is on the way. Yes, and it wasn't a studio announcing it; was Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, but yeah. he's done that all. He's done no, the whole thing. It, yeah. Of course he has. Of I think course he, he has, announces but- all of his films: Free Guy, Deadpool one, Deadpool two, uh, honestly, uh, Six doesn't. Underground. I all I saw all of the announcement of his most recent movies over like the last five years. I feel like Reynolds gets on his told- Instagram. Yeah, I, I feel like Reynolds gets told by his agent. All right, this date. That's when we can start talking about it. Yeah, There'll be absolutely. a press release and an announcement. He's like, cool. Sets a reminder for the day before to post some shit about it. Just yeah. to be the first one, you know? But either way, yes, Ryan Reynolds has confirmed that Deadpool 3 is in development stage. Yes. At so- Marvel Studios, too. So exactly. We do know, obviously, that Disney bought out Fox. So this mm. merger means that x Men's basically dead. Um, yep. And there is speculation that the X-Men characters will move into the MCU as we know it. Yep. But Deadpool 3, mm-hmm. as it's aptly being titled at the moment, is a sequel to the previous Deadpool movies, which yep. were, you know, Fox properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether th- whether this version of Deadpool will merge into the MCU or okay. will it stand on its own? I don't want him to. I don't want him to either. I want Deadpool to stay by himself. I don't mind if others come to visit him. No, but that's- I don't want him to go there. Like in, in Deadpool that, 2, that, there was that cameo where they were all in the room and they shut the door. That was oh, brilliant. That, that, that was the perfect cameo <laughs> because the joke's about, oh, this is the best the studio can afford and blah, blah, blah. And they're and all there. All yeah. that. And then they're just, yeah, I love that. But either way, I don't want to see a watered down version of Deadpool. No. Unless it's literally a cameo where he gets his head cut off, like instantly, yeah. you know, something stupid like that. Yeah. He can be a, a very minute cameo, like- Barely speaking role in, yeah. a, in one of their films, but as far as I'm concerned, just keep him by himself. Yeah, yeah. keep him by himself. Let them drop into him because then they can they can open up their character as well. Well, a I bit think more, I think know? Deadpool is a big. Could you, enough- could you imagine Tom Holland swinging in or something like that, and Deadpool going, "Oh, here comes the Spider Guy," and he lands or something. Twist his ankle and he's like, oh, motherfucker. You know, like- That would be great. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, because he let them people- come and visit him and just open up a bit more. Yeah. Him going to them, he's got to tone it down. Yeah. I well, one of that. the biggest sort of comic book duos, one of the yeah. most popular ones is Deadpool and Spider-Man. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. I, so, I, in the I comics- in the comics, they, they come together quite often for certain stories, but they're usually in Deadpool comics. So, exactly. They are yeah. raunchy R-rated. You know, and Peter Parker's a fucking teenager- of course he would be swearing and trying to have sex with whoever he can and going through puberty and all of these hilarious things that Deadpool will continue to do ever. Especially <laughs> you know? with the especially with the way that that character's now gone where he's like the spoiled rich kid now, basically, basically. But they could play on that. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. And you've got Happy watching him constantly and all that. Happy's fucking his aunt. Yeah. Surely behind closed doors, he's just like, oh, fucking hell, I am sick of this shit. Mm. Like, surely, you know, like, so why not let him come and visit? You know, why yeah. not let him- let I don't want to see Deadpool in a Spider-Man movie. I want to no. see Spider-Man in a Deadpool movie. 100%. 100%. But to say, like, in terms of the violence, though, obviously Deadpool was very violent in comparison. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like it's unwatchable violence. It's, no, it's no, It's violent no, no. in comparison. But, like, you got to remember, like, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is mm-hmm. like a PG-13 movie, but there was some fairly dark horror-style horror elements yeah. to it towards the end, and there has been in all of those Star Wars movies. That's right. Yeah. Um, End game. Mm-hmm. In the first 10 minutes, Thanos gets his head cut off and you actually see quite a decent amount of that. But there's no blood. Being, there's, there's, being- a, there's a tiny little bit, but also in, a, yeah. in Infinity War, how Thanos gets stabbed in the neck, he does bleed, but it's like yeah. purple, obviously. Exa- yeah, exactly. So, yeah. there is violence, there is explosions. They've but just got to know where to, where, where to, where where to can, walk that line. Yeah, but mm. I, th- I honestly speculate, this is my personal speculation, yes. and there's, is that- if they do introduce Deadpool to the MCU, they are going to be walking that line. Ooh, they'll yeah. still, I think, for an MCU-style film, they'll push yeah. that boundary just that little bit. So it's still acceptable for all ages. That's right. But adults will be like, okay, this is pretty kick-ass. I don't think Disney's afraid to go that little bit extra. Yeah, just push but, it a little bit. Yeah, but mm. to keep it within the mainstream franchise. But see, that's the thing. Disney being the jugg- juggernaut that they yeah. are, they would know- they would have like six safety net plans. Oh, they yeah. They would feel like, let's say Ryan Reynolds was due to make his cameo in the in the Avengers or whatever the next Marvel group movie is or whatever that is. Yep. He comes in and they film it the way that they want to, but mm-hmm. then they'll also have, all right, if this if this doesn't get approved by the board to get the PG-13, we yeah. cut this part. If that doesn't get approved, cut this part. And then all of a sudden they would have all these safety nets. I love but those stories. I don't want him there. Yeah. No, that's-, yeah. that's- 2C3Pod has spoken. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Deadpool, stay in your lane. Marvel, 
feel free to visit. Yeah, that, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we don't want it going the other way. Exactly. But speaking of movies like you just mentioned, it's not on the notes, but I do want to bring this up because Ooh. I love hearing about movies that had to cut shit out. Yes. Massive amounts out just to avoid an X rating. Yes. Robocop, for yes. example- had like a triple X rating. They had to present that God to the damn. film board or whatever it is, like four or five must times. Must have been a lot of fucking in that movie. You get a triple X rating. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. yeah. Was, was that Brie Olsen's debut? <laughs> well, she, she would have been a- Sorry, Howell. did you say Robo Cock? <laughs> yes. Cop. 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 Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, all that sugar going straight to your brain. <laughs> Not going on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yeah. what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um, hmm. What's that other one with Woody Harrelson and- Mm-hmm. Natural Born Killers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't oh, think of her yeah. name right now. Yes, but that's, I know. Yeah. That's one I haven't yet seen, mm-hmm. but I want to because I've heard it was so controversial for the day, but I've also mm-hmm. heard recently that they did have to cut a lot out of that so that way it could be acceptable. And it makes me wonder how much- Is that a Spike Lee film? I have no idea. I'm trying to think. Yep. But yeah, like, right. there's movies like Robocop, Starship Troopers, Natural Born Killers, a lot of those movies from the 80s and 90s that had to cut a lot out. But what happens to those- Like, what? how bad were they? Considering right. that there are movies like Human Centipede 2, for example, or Serbian film. Oliver Stone. Sorry, that are, that are out there mm. that are so gratuitous mm. and, you know, graphic in yeah. nature and in content. And, you know, so what did they have to cut out? That's what, I, like, uh, we're, yeah. we're a bit sadistic in that way. Like, we want to no. see that shit. Oh, yeah. I want to see unrated versions, man. Yeah. Like, like, that, like that, yeah, I know absolutely. those older films, because they're filmed mm. on film, like, they would have destroyed them and that's it. Unfortunately. Like, uh, unless mm. they were smart enough to make copies, which it's 2020. I was like, this say, is like 30, man, 40 years do ago. You know, do you know how satisfying it is when you see a film from like the 90s or late 80s and you watch the deleted scenes oh, man. and you see how grainy and like not cut up it is? It's just like literally a blank slate, not edited at all. There's a oh, special edition. I love that there's so a, much. There's a special edition I watched years ago of Alien. Oh, yeah. And it had all the additional sort of. Yeah. But this was on VHS. Oh. So you didn't get the polished digital version. Oh, you I got love that the literal. So much. Like, they like. The sticky tape, the fucking yeah. d- additional yes. scenes back yes. in. I oh. love that. And I was talking about this with my um, uncle-in-law, as you would consider him, like over Christmas, yeah. how we were talking about older films, especially with Quentin Tarantino, where oh. he still films, I believe, all or most of his films on actual film. Yeah. So you do get the pops and crackles, but the little circle that pops up in the top right of the screen, the yeah. little yeah. thing, yeah, you know, the, like- Yeah, the, where, where the guys in the movie theater box would know to go. <laughs> and, and like literally change the reel. Like, yeah, yeah, like, like oh, that I shit. It. I I love mm. it. I, it's old school as hell. Yeah. But you can tell when and like when there's a film that's on video and a film that's digital. One of the first films ever to be filmed on a digital camera, straight mm-hmm. to digital recording, was Star Wars: Attack of the Clones. Oh wow! Yeah, there you go. One of the first films as well, obviously to use you know fucking shitload of CGI. Um, but The Force Awakens, yeah. if you, uh, you haven't seen it, but if you go back and watch yeah. that now, that was one of the first modern films in a long time that made the big bucks that was filmed on film. Really? Yeah. Oh, so obviously oh, there's CGI yeah. elements to it, but yeah. there's a visual distinction. And yeah. that's what I think gives it that aesthetic Star Wars look, mm. that original original. Th- trilogy look it gives you know, it it's, its charm yeah like, and yeah. There's, there's a bit of a difference it's not crackly and grainy but there's just no, a no, clarity no. to it and there's a wider i don't know there's a wider aspect to it and if you if you notice those sort of things or if you go back and deliberately look for them you watch like an avengers film versus like a tarantino film yeah there's a distinct visual style there in terms of the actual videoing and filming itself and oh, I, I, I love that shit mm. yeah. speaking of um uh film have you seen eight millimeter with eight nicholas millimeter. cage no, I haven't. Dude, watch that. That's okay. Nicolas Cage when he's like actually a focused, dialed in actor. Okay. It's fantastic. It's, do, so he, in the he, 90s- he, he finds like a uh, snuff film, like on 8mm oh. tape. I saw it late night on like NBN back in like 99 or some shit. Yeah. Mate, that would have been SBS for sure. No, 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 it wasn't. Because oh, really? It was like actually, that bad, it was actually a box office movie. Though. Oh, okay. No, 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 but it, it is R18 for high violence, gore and real films, like uncomfortable scenes and stuff. And right. he finds like a snuff film and that and goes on this trail to discover this underground like- um, uh, the distributor for these. It's just called Eight MM. Okay. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure if this was going to pull it up or not. So yeah, yeah, yeah Eight, okay. eight millimeter. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine crime mystery. Exactly. Film. Yeah. Joel Schumacher. See this fucking dude. I even said ninety nine. I mean, come you on. got it right. Yeah, but what I mean yeah. is, like yeah. Joel Schumacher, the guy who destroyed Batman, made the campiest movies known to man. See, it, sorry, it's R eighteen plus with all this like over the top violence and stuff. Still made a hundred mil. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like adults go to the film. Exactly. Go to the supers. Yeah. Yes. Um. 
Joaquin Phoenix, James Gandolfini. So yeah, I do. I, I got to see this. Yeah, film, you dude. really do, yeah. man. It's a it, it's a ripper, and it's quite uncomfortable as well. Yeah, but, but as I said, good, one yeah. of my favorite mm. movies, which we've talked about recently, is the number twenty three with Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's some there's a few silly story elements to it, but. Yeah. Directed by Joel Schumacher, mm. the guy who did Batman Forever, George mm-hmm. Clooney, never leave the cave without it. You know, like yeah. The, so the the dude can the dude knows his stuff. Like Absolutely. he can make, he can make fucking films. Absolutely, my dude. But yeah. I think that's a, plenty of a rabbit hole for right now. Yeah, um, you chucked a couple of game bits in there. Did you want to touch on those? Yeah, briefly? I'll go through those very briefly. Mm. Now, obviously, being mm. the beginning of the new year, there really yes. isn't much news in the way of gaming stuff at the mm. moment because so far it's very all light. speculation and what people liked about the previous year or, or what they're looking forward to. And it, <laughs> our it, research this week was absolutely fucked. Yeah. Right. Checking the news every day. And every time there was a new list of top five favorite anime films with dogs, like yeah. from the decade, like it's like, Oh fucking hell. Yeah. Give I us one news. news. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes um, ca- carry on. Sorry. You were mentioning. Yeah. So there's, th- there is something mm. that I have discovered though, which I'm sure that, you know, some of you would already know about, but if you're not aware, it's called the CES 2020, which is, I, what did I put hmm. in the notes? There's a, there's a name for it. Give me one second while yes, I store. Yes, it's the so. Tech Convention, uh, Consumer, sorry, Consumer Electronics Show. Yes, so showcasing. the annual Tech Convention, CES, Consumer Electronics Show, showcasing yes. the latest and greatest consumer technology coming this year in 2020 and moving forward, mm-hmm, such as mm-hmm. 5G smartphones, laptops, visual entertainment. It's Ooh. where all the tech giants like Samsung, NVIDIA, Intel, LG, and AMD get to show off their you know, cash money makers yeah, for the next right. year's sort of speculation. Okay. But the reason I've stumbled across this mm. um, is Holy that- Holy shit. Samsung's next um, QLED TV is 219 inch. Yeah. This what is, the fuck? This is where these- That's like five meters. That's, the- that's a projector. <laughs> Yeah. Get a projector. Yeah. I don't want to have that thing on my wall because that shit will fall. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. See, Holy, I, I've sorry. Always, I've always apologies. thought about getting a projector, but they're just not as clear as a no, shit no, no. I know, I know yeah. and I get it. And this would look amazing. It yeah. would be like a movie screen. It'll cost you like- 219 inch? It'll cost you like fifty to 100,000 fucking dollars. Have you seen the price of those big Sold. Things? Sold. Like, just, <laughs> fuck, I get a movie screen. As soon as, as soon as my we start, wall at home isn't even that big. As soon as we start making that podcast money, man, we'll be able to buy an iPhone 3G. That's right. Pop in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, because I'm a blow yeah. yeah, ptpublic.com. Yeah, but <clears> if you want to watch it live, if you're not in America and you can't go to these sort of things yes, and you want to watch it mm. live like I do, yes. uh, Sunday, Sunday, January 5th, the same day as the competition Inter- for the Strongman mm-hmm. competition, but yep. you can watch it live. You can go home and watch it later on. Ah. Um, it's all there and it shows you that, you know, you can go to the website as well that it has all the list of the tech giants that are going to be revealing all of their goodies. Good Lord, that's but, a lot. But the reason that I bring this up in part of our gaming topics news is mm. that Sony will be there. Sony Ooh. hasn't really brought much to this previous year's CES conventions. Yes. But this year, there's a bit of hype around the PlayStation 5. Oh, I see. Um, but ah, whether- they're, they're, they're the main event slot on the last day. Yes. Ah. So, Sony is the main event. Now, obviously, Sony That's does intriguing. make film and they make technology like sound bars and things yes. like that. But speculation shows that the PS5 is going to get a bit of a show off because they've recently announced the Xbox- Series X, whatever it's called. Yes. The next generation the, thing. The, in the Xbox Madugo. actual box. Actual box? Yeah, yeah. actual box. Console. That's what the X stands for. Actual. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that makes total sense, man. Yeah, 100%. absolutely. Um, if I can just um, correct you slightly, the no. times that you were looking- uh, Shut up. The times <laughs> The times that you were looking at are US times. Yep. So what did I for say? us, no, you said you said Sunday the fifth of January, which is correct on the oh, it's but day. Australia, but it'll for be Monday. Australia it'll yeah. be Monday morning, um, early morning, and then well, Tuesday. Know what I'm doing for work? <laughs> no, I was I was gonna say the um, Sony announcement at Monday five p.m. American time. That yep. will probably be um, Tuesday morning at about six a.m. Yeah. So dude, tune in before if you work. Want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm curious because they've booked the main event slot at yep. this tech show. Come on. Yeah. Xbox just had their announcement. Sony's going to bring in the new year with here's the, here it is. Yeah. PS5. But yeah, so like there's oh, a I'm bit excited. of speculation about what PlayStation and Sony are going to bring. But yeah. after going through the CES and what the other tech yeah. giants are looking at, dude, it's super interesting. As you said, this Samsung I, TV is just I, enormous. I know. And uh, w- it's a conference We're, we're TV. never going to see that at JB at Glendale. No, it's we're never. not going to be on display it there. It won't fit in the front door. It of- really <laughs> won't. Like, it, yeah. it, like the 219 inches or whatever. I'm not a mathematician, but that's almost five meters. Like, you know, that's huge. I am a mathematician, and I can safely say that that is big. 
Exactly, <laughs> yes. Man, yeah. you were a genius. I know. So was Samsung. No, but, but- it, it is quite interesting. Like you said, the LG Electronics, Panasonic, you've got Hisense, like all of these big names. Toyota yeah. fucking is there yeah. for a media news conference. Like Hyundai, Intel, like, yeah. yeah. And to have, uh, to have Sony, P- PlayStation, well- we assume PlayStation mm. main eventing the whole show. Yeah. Ooh, so it's only is, speculation. Quite- you heard it here first, but you know, there may be some PlayStation five yes. uh, announcements, mm. hopefully. Yes. Um, but people are also saying that there's more to show off about the PS four, but I doubt that. No way. Yeah. Because surely not. Obviously the PS four has been out for three years, like a long oh, time. Longer now. than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got my first Xbox one in like 2003. 13, 2014. There you go. So, yeah, yeah so good, we're looking at five years. Five, six it's pl- time. years plus. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. As we get older, it makes me feel like, because time is shorter now. Yes. And I sit there and think, I only just got the Xbox One. But then I think, <laughs> hold on a minute. That was like six years ago. But, yeah, you know, when, when you're a kid, like I felt like I had the Nintendo 64 for my entire life, which I did up until I was 15. You know? Exactly. No, <laughs> so, no, that's right. But that felt like your entire life. And now as you get older, those years go fast by... Yeah. Way faster. I've only just spent all this money on this one thing. Either way, we'll be sure. Make sure you subscribe to wherever you're listening or watching us on right now because next week we will have the the news on it straight away within 24 hours. So, yes, there'll be... There'll be a brand new podcast within 24 hours of this news dropping, which is exciting. Yeah, so I'll mm. be tuning into that to find out and give you the lowdown of Absolutely. everything CES. I'll be tuning into 2C3 Pod the next day. Yeah, bloody better be. I need someone to do quality assurance around here. Well, <laughs> quantity <laughs> over quality. Absolutely. But speaking of quality <laughs> over quantity, yes. well, actually, quantity over qu- No, quality over quantity. Either um, either. Either either. Yes. So, The Witcher has been on yes. Netflix for a little while now. Mm-hmm. As we discussed earlier, it's all there, so you can binge it because mm-hmm. there are a lot of people, 90% of TV watchers out there like to binge things now. Of course. Um, it's getting rave reviews and it yeah. is actually good. Have yeah. you had the chance I, to I check it I haven't had the chance to sit down yet. I did bust through Rick, Rick and Morty, by the way. Oh, so did I. Yeah. I'm going to have to add that last episode to my Christmas sitcom special available on YouTube <laughs> now because that, <laughs> okay. that was a fun little, like, yeah. yeah. I, I get what you mean. The, episode, the season just kind of ended, but at yeah. the same time, it still felt like Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. I was still did. enjoying yeah. every second of it. Yeah. glued to it loved it yeah, yes absolutely. actually fucked up my sister and her um uh, partner's christmas card because i was trying to do christmas cards as i sat there a binge watch rick and oh, morty really? forgot to put his name on the card so yep. he was a little bit ooh, uh, pissy on the day but either way <laughs> merry christmas nathan you're welcome <laughs> fuck um, you nathan apparently <laughs> no yeah uh, uh, trust me he was uh, threatening to jump onto our socials and bag the shit out of me so okay i told him to yeah, well, and he thinks <laughs> any press is good press. What are you doing? <laughs> Come at me, bro. Really? But either way, um, yes, I haven't had a chance to sit down <laughs> and watch <laughs> yeah. it yet, so no. <laughs> yeah, but the great thing about it is that because it's so good, the TV yes. show is quite yes. good. Although, yes, it is essentially based on the book. Obviously, the game, no, 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 The Witcher One, Two, and Three. However yeah. many there are, are probably the most popular source of this now. Yes, but people are watching it, mm-hmm. and people are now going back to play The Witcher 3, which is the last big game in the franchise, which at the time of release, it was massively popular. Yeah. Um, but now more people are playing it than ever before. So on launch day, it had quite a huge number of players. Of course. However many years later, it's got more. Yeah. Yeah. So well, uh, you kind of expect that almost. Well, because it wouldn't just be returning players. Yeah. These would be people going, wow, that was awesome. Yeah. I want to play that game. But not only that, too, it's on Xbox Game Pass. So those who have Netflix for Xbox, oh, nice. I downloaded it. I was like, okay, I was never going to buy this. I mean, I've, I've been recommended uh, The yeah. Witcher by many people over the years, but I've mm-hmm. never personally been into open world RPGs based on mystical yeah. worlds like Elder yep. Scrolls and all that. Yep. I love my futuristic shoot 'em ups That's all mm-hmm. I really like. Mm-hmm. But because it was on their Game Pass, yes. I was like, oh, I'm going to go download it. And then I realized I was part of the statistic. Yeah. Of like, that, <laughs> people are going back to this now. Like, they obviously released it because of the Netflix release oh, on these 100%. things. Oh, 100%. They you would know? have teed that up perfectly. And yeah. it's worked wonders. Yeah. I mean, why the fuck not? I mean, that, that, that's awesome. So- Wait, so at the time, 94,000 people were playing the game on Steam? Yep. Like, uh, not long after it came out on Netflix? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's insane. Over four years after release. So, getting that's 90K insane. or more players on Steam, to, you know, like it's- Yeah, so new player record. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But uh, even that, like, Henry Cavill himself has had a few of those interviews and people yeah. have asked him the dumb question, would you rather go out or would you rather stay in and play games? Oh. And he's obviously answered the obvious question. For anybody over the age of 25, but- also, because he's being paid to do this, he said, oh, I'd like to play, stay in and play games. Yeah, of, well, of course he... I'm sorry. Yeah. He's currently starring on Netflix's biggest show right now. Yeah. Which is available in 
millions of home acro- homes across the world. Yep. It's also based off a video game that yeah. is available for free in millions of homes across the yes. world. And then the stupid interviewer said, would you rather go out when you spend time or would you rather just stay home and watch something? Oh, I don't know. Who pays my bills? Oh, no, it's not the trees. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'd rather stay inside. Fucking Jesus. Ask a yeah. better question. Yeah, that's right. Why did you get your journalism answer. degree? Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's that's obvious. Terrible. Obvious but answer. But I like that Netflix has a successful show right now that yep. seems to be taking off. Don't, uh, apparently, uh, like, I haven't seen either of them, but people are saying, like, as in- this could be the new Game of Thrones in the yeah, sense that it takes that spot. That. Yeah. And it, it seems to be doing a good job. And, man, I actually want to check this one out. Game of Thrones, I just- It never appealed to me. I watched a few episodes and I get the appeal. Yeah. But as I said, I've never really been much- Like, the only thing I've really watched all the way through in terms of medieval-esque yes. st- things is Lord of the Rings. The reason being, it's three movies long. No, that's right. You know, yeah. so I don't have to sit there and watch it for years. That's right. Um, yeah. Game of Thrones went for a long time, convoluted mm-hmm. storylines. I just never picked it up and I yeah. won't. It's yeah. too late for me now. No, I just, exactly. I don't care. Yeah. And especially how that last season was received by their diehard fans. Actually, I actually want to watch that only because I want to. Look, <laughs> I want to find the water bottles. Yeah. That's oh, what I want th- to watch. That's it. Oh, dude, I'm sure it's just on YouTube now. You just go Game of Thrones yeah. being dickheads. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But either way, Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's that's come and gone. It's passed for me, so I'm not interested yeah. in that. But, but the, the Witcher, Witcher is I, apparently I, taking over. Yeah. I definitely think that I could sit there and at least chuck a couple episodes on, and if it doesn't get its hooks into me, I'll at least be. Enough to say, oh, yeah, I'll watch that next week or another yeah. episode another time, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, either way, that's good. I'm glad Netflix is sticking in the fight. You've got a big battle against Disney Plus coming up over the Ooh, next couple of years. So, yeah, yeah you do what you got to do. And those brothers who got fired from Star Wars, no, Game of Thrones. Game writers. of Thrones. Yeah, right, yeah. of course, yeah. Hopefully they can, you know, carry it on. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Anyway. And Henry Cavill, congrats on the uh, re- resurgence of your career. Yes, Fantastic. absolutely. The Superman curse is lifted. Superman nearly so killed your career. So far. Yeah, because yeah. like it did with everybody else. Exactly. It nearly right. killed your career. Um, yes. One but, thing I remembered the other hmm. day, before we move on to the no, next no, no, segment right. of the show, yes. um, the Crisis on Infinite Earth five episode crossover series that we've talked oh, about yes, with yes, Brandon Routh, Routh Tom Arrow Welling. And that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently that's come and gone and I haven't watched it yet. Like- it has it, dude. Could, that that was like two years ago. No, no, no. It's a recent thing. Remember Brandon Routh, Superman? We've talked about oh, it recently. Oh, that. That. Oh, you're talking about with like the five Supermans. Yes. Oh, that. that's what I'm talking oh, about. That's already gone, Apparently. and you missed it. Oh, uh, you oh, sucker! I know. What were you doing? I saw the trailers and I saw like the posters, and then like I haven't heard about it since. I was like, so it's just come and gone. I think so. Wow. Like, oh, I don't wow. know. I'm gonna have to Google it, but like I've just remembered. It's like, hold on a minute. I knew I, re- I really wanted to watch this, but at the same time, did I miss it? Like, did we miss? Did I miss the boat on this? I don't know. Yeah, uh, well, I think so. It yeah. there was a, there was a promo for it on December ten right. last year. So yeah, pff, I may have missed it. I feel like you did. Yeah, yeah. But oh what, well. Yeah, but what I didn't miss. Mm. Are we ready to rip into this? Yeah, let's hit, do it. Hit it. Ooh. Coming at you fresh, coming from afar, it's 2C3 Pod DTC. Ah, that's yes. right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first DTC of 2020 for us. Absolutely. We we'll see mm. a movie which came out essentially in 2019, but it did. it's this- on my 2020 list now because well, it's obviously 2020. That's and- right. We, we, we did our top films of 2019 in yep. the Christmas week last year. So yep. what we see afterwards... Now starting with Jumanji. Yep. I mean, uh, now starting with the film we saw. Uh, <laughs> We've is, already said it earlier in the I episode. I know, yeah. but this is starting a new YouTube. list for 2020 for next year's countdown. So this is on 2020's list. Absolutely. And mm. it's a refreshing beginning to the year. So it's we, nice. Yeah, we saw Jumanji The Next Level, mm. written and directed by Jake Kasdan. Yes. Uh, also written by Jake Pinker and Scott Rosenberg. That's right. Starring your familiar faces of Dwayne Johnson, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, and Karen Gillan. Yeah. Now Sony just- Pictures film. Absolutely. And like we discussed very early, $125 million um, budget. And as of right now, $472 yeah. million. Almost half a billion in like- a week and a half. Yeah. It had an easy That's week. Insane. It had an easy oh, weekend a to go up against. Crazy week. You couldn't ask yeah. for a better week, honestly. Yeah. Anyway, Star Wars. Surely they're kicking themselves that they didn't go. We should have done that week. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, seriously, against cats. Ugh. Yeah. Yes. But, but premise. Yes. In Jumanji, the next level, the gang is back, but the game has changed. As they return to rescue one of their own, the players will have to brave parts unknown from arid deserts <laughs> from to what? snowy mountains. You wrote arid. Arid. From arid desserts? <laughs> from arid from, deserts from, to from, snowy- 
from deserts. From deserts. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. From deserts to snowy mountains to escape the world's most dangerous game, Jumanji. I'm trying to figure out what that word I was trying to write. Anyway, it's Past just like- unknown from arid. Des- it's like a nice kavif. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. All right, listen. moving forward. So, yes, that basically covers the premise. Now, this yep. film, backing up from Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle from a couple of years ago, 2016, I believe. Yep. Um, oh, immediate reactions. I feel like I enjoyed the first one a little bit more, mm-hmm. but this one still filled in all of the bits that made the first one good. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I yeah, get so that. So, just a brief- Yeah. Yeah, and I think Taylor had the same sort of thoughts. Yeah. But for me, I only saw the first Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, mm-hmm. at the cinemas, haven't watched it since, so I oh, can't okay. I can't really compare it yeah, right. to whether I think it was better or not. I think the story itself mm-hmm. in this I liked more because in the first one, it was like, grab the gem, take it to the thing. It was Moana. Yes. You know, it was yeah. take the, take the green gem yes. and put it in the mountain. This is yeah. essentially a very similar story, which we it's, won't get into spoilers. No, but it's basically the same. It's just slightly yeah. different of like, get the gem. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Not take right. the gem and put it there, but, get the gem. But what yeah. I go to these movies for, especially this new iteration of Jumanji, is mm-hmm. to watch these characters, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, The Rock, and Karen Gillan play different versions of themselves. Yes. Yes. And that's what I really like to see. I mean, fair enough, The mm-hmm. Rock is the kind of- he, He's an actor, but he's not really an actor. He, he yes, plays he, he, himself, he, and but everybody does. But I, I feel right, yeah. that this is the kind of film where they really got to flex a little bit more and have a lot of fun. And not De- try yeah. too hard, but I enjoyed the shit out of watching Jack Black act like a 20-year-old- Black kid from Thank you. America, yes. wherever he's from. Kevin Hart doing a Danny Glover impersonation for oh, 90% of the film. I loved it. Fantastic. The Rock doing a Danny DeVito impression. That was great. And Karen Gillan being Karen Gillan. No, that's but right. There like was it- a moment she got to play the black character for a moment. Oh, a split second. A split- and that was fantastic as well. I was very judgmental. I was like, is she going to- to, to ruin this, but no, she was fine. No, was, of course, she, she had, like, yeah. maybe, like, three lines as that character, and it was just fantastic. <gasps> yeah. Damn! <laughs> like, yeah, no. Yeah. Like, the and that, the that mannerisms totally are obvious. Yeah. Exactly, that's right. But like you said, I think that is the main draw card for this. If it was the same characters going into the same bodies, yeah. this film would have been below the first one, just straight up, yeah. out of the gate. Yeah. But because so it was of good that, to see them it, play it added that element where, at the moment, in my head, I'm like, I can see them being on level playing fields, the first one and the second one. Yep. The first one, I probably have that bit of a soft spot for. I saw it at the movies and then maybe two or three more times, just casually at oh, home, okay. just chucked yeah. it on. Oh, you put it on. Y- yeah. yeah, exactly. And then I was like- Well, I own it. I just haven't watched it. Because yeah. I remember watching it going, ah, it just didn't feel right. Like that first one, it just didn't feel right. Like yeah. because of Jumanji, obviously, with Williams. Yeah. And then once it was out at home, a couple of casual viewings at home, and I'm like, this is actually- Good. Well, I think it's that's really what, good. And that's this, and that's was its benefit. If this movie came out on its own, people would have been like, "Yeah, it's a fine comedy film." But people were initially obviously worried because mm-hmm. Jumanji from the nineteen nineties, starring Robin Williams. Of um, course. Uh, what's the f- Spider Man's girlfriend? What's I'll her? get there, mate. You keep going. Um, anyway, that film itself was horrifying, but also very good, and everybody has a you know big nostalgia boner for it. Essentially, that's right. Oh, and Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Sorry, mm-hmm. I was thinking of the adult, and I'm like Spider Man's girlfriend. What the yeah, fuck? not a yeah. fan of her, but she's great in Jumanji as a kid. Yes. yes. Um, but when you go back and watch that film, these new Jumanji spinoffs are very different to mm-hmm. that, but they've got a charm of their own. But the fact that they work so well but still being connected to the original film is what gives it that extra level of charm, I feel. That's exactly right. And I feel like in the first one, there was those little tiny Easter eggs that referenced the 95 movie, but this one, done. Does its own thing. Because it's its own franchise now, and clearly it's making its own money in that. Like, so- yeah. I'm okay with it branching out and becoming its own thing, Yeah, if that makes sense. Now, I've tended to notice that when I watch a movie for the sake of either watching a film to enjoy it or to review it for the podcast, I usually only write a paragraph or more's worth of shit if I didn't like the film. Yeah. So, I didn't write anything. I'm just talking off the no, cuff. No, I, I didn't my, either, man. My initial thoughts of uh, Jumanji The Next Level is that it was fun. Yeah. It was funny. It was a good adventure film. There was plenty of kids in the cinemas, but one thing Taylor and I noticed is that all of the kids in the cinema mm-hmm. were so well behaved in comparison to teenage cunt faces that go yes. to watch horror films. I was one hundred percent. Kids up the back are pissing themselves laughing, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, buddy." Like, They're having a good time, exactly. Yeah. Like my my screening was exactly the same. It was a bit later, so there wasn't as many young people. Yeah, more just young adults and that, not the yeah, teenagers. Okay. Yeah, and that, and there was the laughs in the right spot, and that the atmosphere was fine. Yeah. No obnoxious people or anything like that. Yeah. Whereas, like I said, I saw another film this weekend as well. Yep. And my God, there was a couple of bitches right uh, in front who yuck. got up about four fucking times. Yeah. Like, sit down and chatter, chatter, chatter. You could see the phone light up. And, 
my God, that pissed me off. Yeah. But no, this- You pay to watch a film, put your phone away. (laughs) Not only that, I don't know what they were doing, whether they were meeting up with friends or something out there or like- Ditching to go and see other movies or what, but they literally went left their seats like four times and it drove me insane. Yeah. I'm like, what's the fucking movie? You're missing it. Like, yeah. Oh, but either way, no, I had a great time. Yep. I like the fact that this is now branching out and becoming its own franchise. Yep. Got to just say, classic sequel bait right at the end, oh, right? Yeah. Holy crap. So that- I mean, old mate. Oh, uh, and then- that was, prob- <laughs> that was probably the only Easter egg- to the original. No, you know where I'm getting at that? Where are you getting it from? No, are you saying about the ostriches running down the street coming into the real- Oh, fuck. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, I guess. But at the same- uh, <laughs> oh, Shit. Is that what you were referencing there? Yeah. No. Dude, coffee shop, man. They meet somebody. Nora. Who's, who's you Nora? You didn't recognize her? No, I didn't. Who's okay. Nora? Is that Kirsten Dunst's ca- ca- carrier? Car- no. Nope. It's played by the same person. Uh, okay, this is a spoiler, okay. but I mean, I'm just going to say it. Yep. Bebby Neurith, mm-hmm. she's from the 1995 Ishi. Jumanji, okay. and she played Nora Shepard, and she fuck. is Nora Shepard in this. You're talking to me as if like I'm going to be like, oh my God. Well, you should- it's, it's, it's been too long. Look at her face. She's from 1995's Jumanji. Listen, I believe you. Come on. I believe you, but Come it's on. been a long time since I've seen oh, it. Oh, so- man. I saw that on the screen and was like- <gasps> Okay. Because Danny DeVito was like, oh, man. Yeah. Danny DeVito pulling the- Yeah, the oh, smolder. The, yeah. The smolder. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like- Either as, way. But not- Hey, I was right in saying that scene is, like, nostalgic to the oh, original. Yes. But yes. there's two things that happen in that scene now. You've pointed exactly. it out. Yeah. Well, now that I've spoiled it. Yeah. But you're welcome. Yes. Um, so, overall review. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do film- pretzels. Yeah, pretzel yep. rating. Uh, if I had a whole bag of pretzels to myself, I mm-hmm. would eat the whole bag of pretzels. I yeah. really like this film. No, absolutely. If I'm going, uh, I'll just say out of 10, this is a solid nine for what it is. If this was full, okay, how yes. much would you drink? If this if this, if this, this drink was full yep. of Jumanji pretzels, <laughs> there wouldn't be any left. Okay, so no, you would drink- I, I was satisfied. You would slurp up that salty mess of a drink. I was yes, satisfied absolutely. and I definitely had one at the theatres and yep. it was gone. Yep. So, I mean, hey, I enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah, no, Jumanji, um, the next level, it's good fun. If yep. you like the first one, you're going to love this one. Yeah, absolutely. Same premise, same basic thing, but you get to see them, like you said, flex a little bit more with their acting yeah. chops. It's good for what it is. Yeah. It's really A little good. bit of a spoiler alert. Some of the characters- <laughs> Dude, I've done no, enough. Yeah. Some, of the done. Ca- some of the characters get to swap personalities. Yeah. Which is a lot yeah. of fun. Now, there's a new actor in here, Aquafina, the Asian lady. Oh, so- Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got one note about that. Okay, yep. so before you say that- No, 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 you're right. I'm saying. Yeah, get on. Yep. She got to play for a part of the film. Is this where you were going? <laughs> Danny DeVito? She got to play Danny DeVito's character. And for most of the film, The Rock, we know this from the trailer, The Rock is Danny DeVito's character. Yeah. But then later in the film, she gets to be Danny, DeVito, Danny DeVito's character. And she's got this raspy, what are you talking about? Like that kind of voice to it. T- to me. I loved it. She played it better than The Rock. Oh, absolutely. That's like, what I'm saying. The yes. Rock isn't really an actor. No, that's know? right. Like, as in, he's still got the point across about just slightly talking older and being yeah. like, what's going on? We're in a game? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Well done. You can do that. But Aquafina, like you said. Nailed it. She, yeah. She yeah. was, as soon as she became Danny DeVito, it was like, ha! That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's Ana- exactly. Another good, yeah. confident thing to say about this film is that it's exactly what you would expect by if you were trapped in a video game or trapped mm. playing a video game with two old people and having to explain oh the whole thing to God, them. Oh, my God, yes. And oh. I thought that point was going to be annoying. Kevin Hart playing um, Danny Glover, playing the zoologist. Oh, Lord. yeah. Play, playing the zoologist. The ostrich is one of the fastest. <laughs> like, just that whole yeah. recurring joke. I thought I'd get sick of it, but then, yeah. nah, I like, didn't. Yeah. In the beginning, Danny DeVito as Danny DeVito is that kind of small, loud, annoying oh, yeah, of Boston course character that Danny DeVito yeah. is so good at playing. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get over this, but I didn't. The reason I didn't is because it conveyed so well with the other characters playing that persona. That's exactly so, right. yeah. um, to wrap up this review, as yeah. we said, it's a fun time. Definitely yeah. check out. Jumanji, I keep 100%. thinking of Welcome to the Jungle, but the next, next level, level. Yep. Uh, in cinemas while you can. I definitely yeah. had a good time with it. Absolutely. It'll be running for a while. So honestly, I think you can wait until like the end of February and there'll still be a couple of sessions. As I said- This will be clearing the billion dollar mark. First one of 2020. Yeah. If, you, if you've if you lost your trust in Star Wars and I recommend not seeing Cats, <laughs> go watch- And if you don't have kids and you're not interested in Frozen, go watch Jumanji the next level. Absolutely. But also if you have time and it's near you, yep. go do a rabbit. Yeah. It's good.
See, I yeah. thought that was on our it's, list it, for this week. <laughs> it's, it, it still is, man. Yeah, we will, we will have a review this week. Absolutely. Yes. We'll have to see it. Anyway. But that's been our first show <sighs> for 2020. Yay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can find Two's Company Threes a podcast, also known as 2C3Pod, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All you have to do is search 2C3Pod. Exactly. And if, you wanted, if you're watching the show and you want to listen or you're listening to the show and you want to watch, make sure you check us out on Podbean, Podbean Spotify, 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 Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, Big summer, summer boy. Out. Now, of course, you can support the show heading over to tpublic.com. You can buy yourself a small bit of merch, a mug, a t shirt, a sticker, and a magnet. Uh, head over there if you want to support the show in a way that gives you something in return instead of paying into a Patreon where you get nothing but already the free stuff. Exactly. That's right. And if you'd like to contact us for any business inquiries or anything like that, like Lake Max Strongman did, yeah. make sure you flick us an email at two's company three's podcast at gmail.com. Now, Moving forward, like we have last year, and now this year, we've got no. two podcasts every week, oh every Wednesday, God. and every Friday. Tune in. Holy crowl. And not only that, wait, is it N4 videos on YouTube every week? <laughs> is that right? I know. Four videos? Oh, that can't be right. But They make must sure you be subs- mad. They must be crazy. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to see if they're lying. Absolutely. We're not lying. It's four videos every week. It is. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. hard work, but we do it for you and for us. Quantity over quality. (laughs) Absolutely. Anyway, thank you, everybody, Mm. for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Head over to Facebook and everywhere else as well. Make sure you do tune in on Fridays as well. That's right. We'll see you on Friday. But for now, my name is Mitchell, along with my co-host Dylan. Dylan. And we are Two's Company. And you you are are the the podcast. podcast. I love it when it's twice as loud. Really makes the eardrums pop. Yeah. Mm, real good. No, it's good. It's a great start to the year, man. Yeah. One for one. Yep. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. let's bust that out. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of music to yeah. get through. Ah, there we go. So we've All got right. this movie trivia cards. Yes, movie trivia cards. Thank you to the in-laws. Mm-hmm. What game does Beetlejuice play with Lydia to get her name get her to guess his name? Oh fuck. I'm gonna get slaughtered for this because I've never seen Beetlejuice. <sighs> I know. See, that's what I mean. But is it? You give me it, shit for not watching certain things, but you haven't seen fucking Beetlejuice. Is it? Is it? Is it charades? Correct. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for checking out that video of Two's Company Three's a podcast. We really appreciate it. Wasn't it really something? Why don't you drop a comment down below while you're still here on what you thought about that video? And once you're done, go check out the next video. Feel free to hit subscribe as well. I think it'll be a really good investment for your future.